Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making your way here and checking out the series. You know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. I am so excited today to be talking with Jessica Francis Duke. Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great over here. So here we finally are. Ozark season four, the beginning of the ends. Yes. How's it how's it feeling to finally be in this spot? You know, it's 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 been a long road to lead up to here. We were shooting for a very long time. So I'm really, really excited um, to see everybody's work and you know, working through COVID and all the things that we were doing. It's just a, it's really exciting to finally be at this moment. Yeah. And I'm really excited for the fans to finally get to go on the rest of this journey. Yeah, and, and it has been a wait uh, to get to here. But as you said, and I know that's the easy part of the topic right here, but it is such a unique way of doing things. Like, how has this been, like, what, how was the process so different this time that you had to do it through, obviously, the, the, the COVID era that we're in? Well, you know, it actually, uh, it snatches away your personal life. <laughs> because you really do have to take care of the entire team. Like every day you're out, um, you are possibly jeopardizing, you know, the entire company. Um, so we really had to just stay strict and take care of each other. And, you know, we're really the only people we're around in these times. So it was really kind of awesome after being in the house for so long before we started shooting to be around everybody and be back together so it was awesome i mean we had so many protocols that we had to kind of go through to stay safe um but the COVID teams were just top notch and they kept us so safe and it was just a wonderful wonderful environment yeah well and especially seeing what you've been doing since shooting it because you've you've uh, you've also been on broadway uh trouble of mind and, and yeah. I kind of wanted to bridge the two worlds before we really get into Ozark here, because coming into that, I, I felt like there was probably a little bit of crossover. Well, I, I should ask if there's crossover, like especially how do you is do you find that you bring the way you approach what you're doing in, in theater to, to film? Is it is it a similar process? No, you know, there, there are there are similarities in the character building, you know, how I find the characters. Uh, uh, music is a huge part of things for me, figuring out what the character's playlist is, what type of art do they like, all that stuff is still similar. Um, but you know, with theater, you're developing something every single day with a company of people. And it literally is like um, eight hours a day. Uh, you're in a room with everyone building this masterpiece. And with TV and film, you know, you're doing a lot of that by yourself. So. I use the tools that I have in rehearsal, the same sort of map um, for building the character, but then you get the set and it's opening night. There's maybe one little rehearsal or two. We don't do table reads on Ozark, so you really are thrown into the fire right away. It's interesting. I've really enjoyed hearing you talk about, especially with uh, with Millie and in, in your character that you play in, in Trouble in Mind. Um, so I love I think her so much. <laughs> Well, you brought up uh, Eartha Kitt, I think, as, as one of the folks. That was great because it just gave me an excuse to revisit. I mean, I, that's a great era for me, too. I, I love listening to that. I, I was not um, aware of Nina Mae McKinney. And so you kind of gave me that opportunity as well. Like, I, I, I would love you to talk more about that, especially as, as we're here with Consequence of Sound. Like, why, why, why is that your, your process and your routes to go towards the music to find the character that you're in? Uh, for me, I'm I'm also a musician. You can see my bass clarinet peeking through, and my clarinet is right here. So uh, my father wanted me to be a musician. So I was thrown instruments very early on, um, and I look at at companies, whether it be a cast of TV and film or a cast of theater, as an orchestra. And I think that each character is a part of you know the sound. And I always like to think, you know, what is the instrument that my character brings in? You know, what is it that that I bring to the melody and so even when I auditioned for Ozark um, I was listening to the show as I was working on my side because there is a rhythm to it so I just have a sort of musical 
love in my body. And I think that's what just turns things on for me. And with Millie, I had this whole playlist of, you know, wonderful songs from the 50s that she would have been listening to. You know, she's a wild one. And I, I wanted to create sort of a map for myself every single day before the show to listen to, to get into character. So who were those artists for, uh, for Maya Miller uh, here on, on Ozark? Maya Miller is a lot of classical, you know, she's a very different beast than I am. Um, she's so by the book. She's so, um, well, she, she, yeah, she tries to be by the book, um, but she has a sort of zenness to her. And so I kind of zen out with her first. Millie, I had to ramp up. So I had to ramp up that energy because, you know, it's the stage, it's the Broadway stage, it's big. It's, you know, she was a lot. She came in with so much. And so it was a lot of revving up. And with Maya, it's a lot of calming down. Yeah. Well, it's, it's also kind of interesting, like it, it's not a direct relation, but you're hitting on very big topics, very important big topics on both shows. Um, talked about, you know, there, there is a lot of uh, talk of race and trouble of mind. And then with Ozark, of course, we get into the war on drugs and and just everything that comes along with it. Like, do you find that it's that with those characters are similar ground? And is that something that you all talk about uh, on the sets? You know, uh, as far as Millie and Trouble in Mind, we talked, you know, consistently. It's it's uh, such an important piece, you know, and, and the beauty about Trouble in Mind when we came into it is we were all there for that playwright. We were a part of something that was history, you know, bringing that play finally to Broadway after 66 years. Um, and, you know, it's just the conversations in the room really prepared us for what we were doing every night. And also the experiences that we've all been through in this industry as actors, especially as black actors in this industry. And as far as for Maya Miller, you know, I had to study a lot of things. And um, as far as how this country is run and, and the loopholes that happen that we see a lot in Ozark, we see these power structures um, and, and how people sort of get through um, and it's just, it was just fascinating. It also, it makes you a little scared <laughs> that so many things can be happening without us knowing, but it's, it was a whirlwind of studying and um, I just love sort of going in. Right. Well, I mean, Ozark, not that I have to say it, but it's a very dark show. I mean, you know, and, and to be able to still see ourselves in those characters. I mean, I think that's one of the greatest feats of, of this show right here, but it's still to ha to go into that mindset of 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 the corruption of the the brutalness of of what's going on in these i mean what again what is that like for you as you are looking at you know it's not like you get an escape from the world at hand i guess is right. what i'm getting at right here right no you know it's especially for maya coming into it um she, you know she, they, they talk a little bit about her background in season three as far as like what her father was into and why he went to jail and all these different things they, they touch on it very quickly so she's not foreign to you know the idea of crime uh, but now she finds herself you know in the middle of something that i don't necessarily think she knew the 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 what's the word, how, how major it was, you know, I knew she knew what she was doing, but I think it, you'll see in season four, it just, it's a bigger rabbit hole than she ever knew or thought. And um, she gets dragged down there and, and the darkness, I had to study so many things that they just rock your mind. You know, I studied so many FBI investigations. I was like, somebody's going to put a <laughs> tap on my computer because they're going to be look at my Google search and be like, what is this woman doing? Um, but it's, you know, it, I think we fall in love with that type of stuff because we're all imperfect people. You know, we all make mistakes and to watch people in the middle of just mistake after mistake after mistake and get caught up in this sort of spider web that they weave themselves you know it's just it's juicy for us because we do it every day mm -hmm. it's not to that extreme but yeah. no I, i've heard in a lot of interviews especially with uh, other cast members it seems like the questions always ask about why this connects so much with with the audience and i started thinking about it in the musical terms uh that we've been talking about um and I'm, i mean i'm sure there's a lot of reasons by the way just this might be one of them but the way you know when we're sad we tend not to listen to happy songs. When you're sad, you listen to sad songs. And when you're happy, you know, it, it's, you sort of lean into it. It feels like there's a little bit of that going on here. Yeah, yeah. It's funny when 
Ozark season three came out, you know, we were right at the top of the pandemic. And I was like, how's this gonna happen? Like, you know, so many people already in a weird space, like, are they gonna receive the show? And, you know, and it, it just was, it was shocking how many people were like, I needed that. Like, I needed to see that somebody else's life was a lot more screwed up, <laughs> I'm about to say another word, but a lot more screwed up than mine. And that actually gives me an escape. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's weird that even though it's such a dark show, it is an escape because you're like, oh, actually my life is okay. <laughs> You know, that's what it is for me. Right. Well, it's also interesting because your character, again with Maya, um, I mean, you've been such a base of morality leading into the fourth season. And 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 I know that, you know, we were all set up with will she, won't she, you yeah. know, but 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 having to 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 kind of come in again in, in this darkness in, in what's going on and to try to be some sort of rock, I, I guess. I mean, is that how you saw it? I think she wants to be. I think she really, really wants to be a rock. I think she really, really wants to um, be the best at what she does. I think that she is the closest that we've seen get to the sort of core of what's going on. You know, the FBI agents in the mix before this haven't gotten as close as she is. And um, I think that she sees herself as sort of a crusader or you know sort of a, a um a hero in a sense you know it's funny every day i would get to set my earrings that i wear I wear the same earrings throughout all of season three and all of season four because maya is not a fashionable person um but they're called the hero earrings and i was like i am kind of a hero and i think she really really wants to do good it's just a matter of what that means and how that is in this story what is she, you know it's she's at a place where she's like what does being good mean and how do i do my job and be good and save people and take care of me All right well I, I especially love that you know the main person that you're working uh with uh character wise is marty and and that you know especially when you look back at his journey in season one uh we're talking about jason bateman's character obviously um sort of being that same thing you know wanted to be the good person and now that's 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 the two of you faced with each other i mean that couldn't have played i guess better um for me it's not a question more of a compliment to, to the series <laughs> yeah yeah and i i just love it you know because maya marty and 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 jessica and jason you know there's so many parallels that I love about it. Like, you know, coming into this massive show three seasons in or two seasons in last season um, with people that I've been watching all my life, you know, it's just, you want to do your best. You want to do, you know, you want to show up and you want to have everything, you know, ready so that you're not a hiccup and, and you, you meet Jason and you just sort of breathe. You sort of let go and he just, he just sort of sets up the room to do the best work that they can do. Um, and I think for me, I look up to him so much um, and I just love the way his brain works. So it works that Maya also loves the way Marty's brain works. You know, I think they have a lot of similarities and me and Jason are both Capricorns too. So there's like, there's so many parallels that I use as Maya um, for Marty and I's relationship. Yeah. And then there's the added thing on that, because he he does direct some of these episodes as well. So, again, having your time spent so much with him, you know, as your characters and then putting the director on it, too. I mean, what does that add to, to the whole relationship and process? Well, I didn't get a chance to work with him as a director of uh, both seasons. I missed him. He wasn't on my episode. Um, but I every day in the room he's you know such a director so it's i get a little bit of a glimpse of what he's like you know i actually got a chance to work with laura lenny this season as a director and that was just epic you know it's always awesome when one of the team is directing you know and actors have a different way of talking to actors um but it's it's just i soak in so much from all of them mm. well again here we are in the final season you all went into it knowing it's the final season that, uh, that had to add something I, I would guess as well you know i've been a fan of this show since day one um before i ever knew that there was a possibility that i would be on it 
And so when I heard the end was coming, I think first I reacted as a fan where I was just like, how are they going to tie all of this up? And then as an actor, I was like, what's going to happen it for, to me, you know, it's, you know, and every script that came in, it's one of those shows where you think it can't get better. And then the script comes in and you're just like, I, I threw my script at one point in my apartment one night because I was just like, these writers are genius. Um, so I think that four seasons of this show, technically a, almost a fifth because you'd have two parts. It's just the perfect sort of cap off um, and a perfect way to say goodbye. I think that, you know, certain shows sometimes will push it and they didn't want to push. They were just like, this is perfect. And I agree. Well, I, you know, no spoilers, of course, uh, right here, but you know, I would have to ask, is it possible to have a happy ending on a show like this? You know, I don't know. I, I, I challenge you and send that back to you. You know, I think that life is life and you can have a happy ending if you choose to. Um, but sometimes you're in situations that it's not up to you. So I think we're going to find out how it kind of turns out for everybody. And I think everybody at the end of season three is sort of on their own trajectory and it all sort of just unfolds in a beautiful way in four. Yeah. Do you have, oh, sorry. I say you guys will get to see real soon. <laughs> well, do you, do you have any kind of um, expectation of fan takeaways uh, of how they're going to feel at the end of this? I, I don't want to say, I, I already know how I feel. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, it's a roller coaster ride. It's a roller coaster ride. And they truly did say we're going out with a bang. We really are. And I'm just so excited to see, you know, I'll be on Twitter looking at all the, you know, comments and everything. I'm excited to see how everybody reacts. I have no clue how they're going to react, though. I think people are going to be excited. People are going to be heartbroken. People are going to be happy. People are going to be, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be um, worth it. Yeah, well, that's why we've loved it so much uh, this whole time anyway. Uh, and Jessica, I loved what you've done with this character and, and how it's played in there because it's become such an important part of this story. So, you know, congratulations on all of this. Thank you so much. I'm having a ball. Uh, I should also point out, I wanted to ask real quick before I get off of here too. So I'm based here in Louisville and uh, and I know you've done, you know, lots of like actors theater. You've, you've done some stuff here, right? I came down to there. I came down there to do Macbeth a while back and I played Lady M. Wow. Wow. So uh, I'm sorry I missed that one. I tried to get over to Actors Theater as much as possible. But uh, yeah, it was, it was really great seeing that you were a part of that. I love them. I had a great time. I went to all the distilleries and I had a ball. <laughs> well, it, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this. Again, congrats on everything that's been going on with you. Uh, I know, you, you know, with what you've got going on, there's probably much more to come as well. And uh, I look forward to keeping up with it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.